Hey, Bob. It would like we're up to 10 there. Hope everybody's doing well. This here's a big mess. If y'all could, uh, Michael, appreciate it, bud. Um, yeah, all right, yo, yo, good evening. What's up, Brett? If y'all can hear me, just kind of give me a, uh, give me a, give me a thumbs up there. Uh, David, Northern Idaho. Hello. Yes, a lot of folks there, everybody. Heck yeah. Man, what's up, Joe? What's going on in West Virginia, brother? Hello, Sean. All right, all right. Uh, Herb, I'm I'm going to be going over. Uh, I'm going to be talking about calf tail versus calf body, um, and I'm going to kind of piggyback that with the uh, um, the video I did about our uh, hackle um, there. So it's all going to start to come together. My goal is to. Uh, Really, the videos that I want to do or, or the live uh, events I want to do is kind of tying certain techniques together in the construction of a fly. Uh, for me here, it'll probably be more dry fly first, and then we'll maybe venture into to the nymphs there for sure. Um, um, I am solo. Uh, hopefully, everything's going to go all right today. Uh, first and uh, foremost... Uh, uh, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Boy, what a, what, you know, for 2020, 2021 have been some real challenging years, but also been some very rewarding years as well. And Happy New Year to everybody uh, on behalf of myself, the Norvice family. Uh, there, we couldn't, we would not be doing this here with you if you folks were not taking place uh taking part in this and yeah jody I, i'm letting the um letting the beard kind of get back out there not quite to where it was this time last year when i had the santa claus beard but uh it's there uh just a uh, few housekeeping things there oh i saw a little sad thing i'm sorry um anyway uh just a few housekeeping things the algorithms here apparently and i'm no it guy y'all know that for sure uh, but uh, share um, the heart thing, I believe, is kind of what you want to do. So make sure y'all do that. If you have any questions, in my chance, I don't get them. because I, I have the camera uh, here. I had it positioned in, in the landscape and, or whatever, and I had to go back this way. Uh, in, until I get my Elgato cam link squared away where I feel comfortable, I'm not going to have any issues. Then I can use the DSLR function on my phone to give you that really, really awesome stuff, uh, similar to what Britt and Brian did last week. And a big shout out to Brian for those three flies last week. Um, that uh, that emerger pattern there uh, has been working really well here in the area for us. Uh, so the timing of you tying that, uh, the Quigley emerger right there was really good. Um, show season is kicking off for a lot of folks there for Team Norvice. Uh, you've got January the 7th and the 8th. You have the Western Idaho Fly Fishing Expo. Um, that will be uh, uh, Brian and Brett Davenport. And keeping this G-rated, maybe they can tell you about the pity kitty that I keep seeing pictures of. So if you're out that way, swing by and see those folks there at the Western Idaho Fly Fishing Expo. Uh, January 15th, 16th. Uh, I think Tim and, and them and uh, uh, Braden will be at the Virginia Fly Fishing and Fly uh, yeah, and Wine Festival. Um, you know, beverages and fly fishing, they all seem to go together, uh, apparently. Uh, so they'll be at that. January 21st, 22nd, 23rd, Fly Fishing Show, Marlboro, Massachusetts. Um, that's a big one. Um, and then January 28th, 29th, 30th. Uh, you have the fly fishing show in Ediston, New Jersey. Um, so, folks, uh, you know, be sure to get out there and get to the shows. If you haven't had a chance to see some of the new accessories that we have for Norvice, such as the Norvice Tool Caddy, um, those will be there uh, for you to take a look at. And, uh, you know, certainly if, if you're looking, at, you know, at purchasing a Norvice and you don't live where I'm at, uh, go by, let the crew uh, teach you 
uh, you know, demo that vice, and maybe you can sit down there as well, spin it, see what you think about it before you do make an investment because it is an investment for sure. Um, so with that being said, let's kind of hop in here to a few things that, that, that some folks are a little bit uh, weary of getting into or, or tying with material wise. The first one being a calf tail. Um, so calf tail is a fantastic material to tie with, but for some folks it can be a little intimidating. And I think the biggest reason for that is the fact that just the hair itself is just a little bit bigger to work with. So right here is a, a new calf tail, or it can be called a kip tail. But if we look at these fibers, and they're real crinkly. Don't know how well that's gonna show up right there, but uh, you can kind of see that. There's a lot of under fur in this particular uh, tail, regardless of the color. Uh, you can dye these in various colors uh, there for different looks, different patterns. The Mr. Rapidan pattern is a great fly, great, great fly uh, in the spring, summer. Uh, you're looking more for a calf tail along these particular colors here. You can see I've really picked this one off. Uh, but down here, typically, you'll get some of these calf tails will actually have some black uh, hair down here. Uh, and you can see in the dyeing process on this one, it's a little bit darker hair. And that really is uh, kind of a neat variant in there to work with. So certainly you know, adjust your patterns, be creative with what you're coming up with. But right here, you can kind of see the yellow one. Um, you can see a, a, a white one that I've kind of picked over and you can, you can really see the black uh, down in here as well um, there. And, um, and, and Britt brings up a great point. Uh, I've never done the static guard, uh, but I think she did that on one of the videos there and it cooperated a, a bit more in, and stack nicer and that's a very very good point and that's really the reason why we do these videos is to share great information out there with people all around the world um, red you know here, here's a red one uh, hopper patterns things of that nature is typically uh, where you would see the red come into play uh, here's kind of a uh, chartreuse green uh, this one here if you hit it with the UV torch it does glow uh, for sure. So just a, just a few colors that I have lying around here at the house for various applications. But um, if, if we go here from the calf tail and we go to the calf body, you're going to notice a, a, a much finer hair. Now this hair right here is a little bit easier to work with. Uh, it's a little bit easier to stack. And if you get really good with this here, you don't even have to use a hair stacker. Uh, but this hair is, is finer. Uh, but if you look at the amount of hair you get from the tail to the patch, I dare to say there's definitely more usable hair on the calf tail. However, in my opinion, the calf body hair gives you a prettier fly. If that's important to you, that is something you might want to consider. Another reason why we want to use these materials is buoyancy. So if you're fishing a little bit rougher water like we have here in Western North Carolina, for instance, a lot of pocket water, losing quite a bit of elevation over a period of time, a fly that, that floats well, a very buoyant fly, is really important to us. So you're going to notice in some of your, what I call your Southern Appalachian fly patterns, a lot of hair wing type flies, whether it's calf tail, calf body, uh, elk, uh, things of that nature used throughout the fly, whether it's the wings or if it's even the, the tail of the fly uh, also, uh, or a combination thereof. Um, but that's where you have the ability to be a little creative for the area you're at. Um, you can tie this in two ways. You can tie this in with a split wing, of course, for may mayfly wings, or you can do it parachute style. A lot of folks these days are opting for synthetics for their parachute post. I certainly understand that. Um, however, for a more traditional fly, um, calf tail, calf body is certainly going to be the way to go. 
And when you get pretty proficient using these materials, if speed is an issue for you, um, you will actually be able to turn these out quite quickly right there. Um, Don said you haven't bought a vice yet this year. Well, the, uh, you know, that, that can be changed uh, at a moment's notice right there. Uh, Joe says, as he uses calf body for super micro midges, uh, one for stream in West Virginia, 24 and smaller. Um, you can, and I think that's, I think people are a little intimidated in trying those things. Understanding thread size management, uh, material management will certainly go a long ways for you. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to tie, a, uh, we're going to tie first with the, uh, with the calf tail, and then we're going to basically, you know, do the same thing with a, a calf body, let you see the differences uh, between the two. And then uh, y'all be the judge and hopefully y'all pick something up. I'm going to change these old spectacles here. They told me when I got about 45 that my eyes would start going and I laughed. Boy, the warranty expired at 45. I don't know about y'all for sure. But uh, anyway, let me grab a little full and meal hook. We're going to slap here into the old Norvice Liberty Blue Legacy C with the Magnum stainless steel hubs. Hey, Jim. Hey, Pedro. All right. Fantastic. So we're going to put this here in my standard jaw. And this is a jaw that I use more than anything else. Hey, Paul, um, it is this one here. Um, you know, it's what I started with. All the jaws are fantastic. Um, but, but the great thing is there is something out there for everybody. So one of the things that we want to do and we have to keep in mind is the fact that when we tie in our wings, you know, we've actually got to fold these upright wings back. So if we look here at the top of the hook shank, so I've got to have an area where I can tie in my wing where I'm not going to crowd the upper third of this hook and crowd my eye, okay? I have to be able to wrap a hackle in there. Now, if you get your wing a little bit too far forward, what will happen is you will have to get more hackle wraps behind the wing than you will in front of the wing. That's perfectly okay. As long as you can get the tippet through the eye of the hook, that's fine, okay? Uh, but, you know, understanding those proportions of where you need to tie these wings in at these materials based upon the type of material is, you'll get a better fly and you'll get a better quality fly for sure. So what I've got here in my Norvice is I've actually got this uh, size 12 and I'm just going to lay down a thread base of this classic wax thread. Um, it is Semper Fly. And if you noticed, I'm kind of, if, if I'm not quite... If we split this up into thirds, I'm not quite thirds there. I don't know how well you can see. Um, but when I tie this in, you're going to understand when I fold this upright wing back, it, it should turn out okay for me. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my calf tail, and I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to select, um, you know, a clump of material. Now, understand that we're going to lose some of this. All right. So we're going to get a, a clump of material, just like so, okay? And But down here at the bottom, there's a lot of fluff in here, all right? So this is the point where you're going to start pulling out and cleaning out that fluff. Uh, you can use a comb. I typically use my fingers. But I want to get rid of some of those fibers in through there, and it's going to be a lot easier to tie with. If you're not doing that already and you're having difficulty with tying in calf tail, that could be one of the issues, is you're not taking that step of cleaning out the fluff or the under fur there. Um, so different hair stackers. Uh, here's a Dr. Slick, this is a small one. Uh, here's another hair stacker in a medium. Uh, here's, uh, let me grab all Bob Ross here for just a second. Um, and here's a larger one. Um, in the hair stackers, you're gonna use different sizes for the different hair that you're tying or the, or, you know, the clumps or what you're doing there with it. But I'm going to start here with the uh, medium. I'm going to try to get a pretty good stack. And, I, and if I can, I may go down to the small one. Uh, now, sometimes these hair stackers can hold a little static. Um, and you can use a, uh, I think it's a dryer cloth um, to clean and take away the static uh, out of your hair stacker so the hairs will not, uh, you know, stick. Um, you know, that's that's a nice little tip right there. 
and even when I stack this here, I got a few few fibers that are a little non cooperative. So let me do a little restack right there. I just dropped it into my handy dandy trash bin, which is probably one of the most handiest things that we got here on the on the Norvice. Okay, so when I and uh, remove this, I want to have it with my tips facing forward. Uh, Paul, you love Bob Ross, man. <laughs> Dude, what, what, I think he touched a lot of people out there in a lot of different, uh, uh, you know, ways, such as YouTube now with his videos, but uh, PBS, I remember watching Bob Ross, and he made me think I could go paint the prettiest mountain scene there is. And I tried it, and it, it was awful. It was bad. It was bad. Um, so anyway, I now have my tail fibers stacked, and we're going to measure this out here, and we want to tell about the length of the shank of the hook. Um, and, and what we're going to do is I'm going to transfer that up to here. I'm going to give my uh, Norvice Auto Bobbin a counterclockwise twist because I want them to, I want my thread to kind of jump back Okay, I want it to jump back just like so. Now I'm going to make some wraps, trying to keep my hair on top. Now that right there, I don't like the size of that, so I'm just going to loosen that up. I'm going to just slide it back just a little bit right there. Then this is when you can make that adjustment, folks. Once you kind of get past this point and you lock it down, you're there, okay? And to be honest with you, this is the first one I've tied today. So I'm just hopping in here. All right, so I'm gonna take my scissors and I want to come in at an angle. This is gonna be tough for y'all to see. I'm gonna come in at an angle and I'm gonna snip it like that. Then the reason why I do that is I want to go ahead and build a body taper, okay? So what I'm going to do now, I'm just gonna lock those bud ends down, just like so. And with the rotating feature on my vise, I like to turn it many different positions so that way I have greater control and I can see what's happening with my um, wraps. All right, so now I'm gonna start really torquing this down. And here, I'm actually gonna lift up and I'm going to start to build a thread dam here in front of the calf tail, just like so. And I do this way instead of using the uh, 88 out the gate rotating feature because I'll need to hold the hair back, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna take a half hitch tool and I'm going to just push up against that like so, okay? Just like that. Now, if we were gonna do a parachute post, we would wrap around that to post it up. But here in this case, I think we'll do a traditional mayfly type wing. So I'm going to take my thumb and I'm gonna push back and it will kind of start to give you a separation point in there. And then you can somewhat massage those uh, fibers in the direction you want to go. Look to where you got it somewhat even gonna make start getting me some wraps in here like so and then I'm gonna start posting this up boom some figure eight type action just like so okay now this one here is purple um, and I seen a fly variant today of a uh, Adams variant that came off uh, uh, mr. Rally on inst Instagram there, and it was it was purple, and it it, it it's a ah, it's it's a derivative of of, of a fly that Fred and Aline Hall tied um, years ago, and then that uh, John and Katie Demuth did on their Whip Finish Wednesday, and I said that dog will hunt that that thing looks um, uh, juicy. You know, those trout are gonna love that thing. And John picked up on that thing right away. Um, uh, you look great just for men beard. <laughs> Patrick, my wife don't like the beard, brother. Um, you know, it, it's, it's great uh, insulation for winter time. And it's finally turning winter this evening. We've actually had 70 degree weather, but we're under a winter storm 
watch and warning depending on where you're at here in North Carolina. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to take a little bit of, uh, of, of some light colored deer hair and I'm going to stack that there right quick. This is going to be my tail. So we're kind of sticking to the theme of where we we're using hair for, you know, for your wings and your, uh, and a tail on this particular fly. Once again, we're going to stack that there right quick until your hair stacker flies apart because I didn't keep my finger on it. And then once we do that, we're going to use some K-Pock dubbing for the body. This K-Pock, it's actually going to be some Semper Fly and it's a UV purple. Um, and then for the hackle, I'm going to use golden badger off of a cape. And if you guys remember us talking about the capes and uh, things like that the other day, that will really kind of tie into that. Keith, Randy, JD, Ridgely. All right. Good to see y'all in there. Okay. So I've got my hair stacked there for my tail and I want my tail uh, you know, roughly about the length of the shank. It's not going to be exact. Northwest Montana, man, it looks like y'all got dumped with snow and y'all need that snowpack for sure. Um, and I've been noticing some pictures from Idaho, some people uh, just bragging about that lovely white stuff that they have on the ground out there. I won't mention any names at all. And I'm being a little sarcastic when I'm talking about that. Uh, once again, I'm going to spread, uh, spin my thread counterclockwise. And I'm going to make some loose wraps. And what I like to do is that tail is too long. If you notice, I did not torque down on that. I can make that adjustment. And I'd rather do it now. It does not have to be perfect, but let's try to get it as close as we can. Get it in there like so. Let's see where I'm at now. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to put that in there pretty close to where that calf ended. All right, so I want to go some looser wraps, and I do not mind if this tail flares, okay? Um, and, and, and the reason being is, uh, to me, a little bit of the flare on this tail here for us, it, it helps to work it on the edges of a little bit of that white water. I'm not talking about in the waterfall section of that, as maybe you get like an 8 to 12 inch drop as it comes down. But, uh, you, know, you know, Joe Bragg, I know what I'm talking about. When you're working those mountain streams and you're working, uh, you know, what is good, foam is home, those lines like that, you, you need something that's a little bit more buoyant. You need something that's going to stand up and, and, make, and, and make the fish really take notice and, and come over and, and, and hit that. So, you know, for me, um, I'm not too concerned about if I have a little bit of flaring action on, on the tail, uh, I, I believe it adds a little bit of buoyancy to it, but that's me. I'm, I'm going to trick this out a little bit. I'm going to take one piece of crystal flash. Crystal flash, we always think of underwing material, uh, but it's a great ribbing material. I'm going to tie that in here on my side of the Norvice, and I'm just going to wrap that back, try not to capture any of those fibers. And that's one thing, too, that will happen with, uh, you know, your calf wing and sometimes you'll you'll capture some of those fibers so there we go um looking pretty good so far kind of build this up cover that up there just a smidge looking good so now i'm going to take uh hey john from new jersey hope everything's going well up your way i'm going to get some of my dubbing here and i think i want to do a video for y'all one day about my uh, tying setup there i get asked about that uh, but i'm going to be using some of this here dubbing out of this particular uh, packet. So I'm going to get some of this K-Pock. And this K-Pock is really, really thin. It holds up 30 times its uh, weight. <laughs> it was used in PFD uh, devices back during the World War. And all I want is a thin noodle. And um, the way I've got my light set up in here, folks, it, it's a little bit difficult for me to see, but it's great for y'all. Um, and that's really what I'm concerned about. So if I misstep here, please bear with me. Now I'm just going to start to rotate my vise. And when I get here, I'm just, I'm just using that rotating feature. All right, I like how that looks right there. I'm gonna add a little bit more. You know, 
It's easier to add dubbing than it is to take it off. Now there's a lot of patterns where I use the rotating feature to spin that onto my thread. But here this evening for the delicate work, I'm going to do this. Jody says, your hammer there in Vermont. Wow. I don't really keep up with the, with a lot of the weather, uh, you know, across the country. I just kind of see maybe what, uh, what my friends have posted or things like that. But um, here it's just been unseasonally warm. Um, we finally got, a, got some rain. Uh, the dry fly action had been great. And, um, but I think that's all about the change for us is we might, might, might get back to a little bit of winter here in Western North Carolina, more specifically Jackson County. It's a, kind of the foot of the Blue Ridge Parkway in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park there. And if you folks ever make it to Silva, Bryson City, or Waynesville, North Carolina, be sure to stop by and see us at the shop there. That's Tuckasegee Fly Shop. We have three great locations to, to help all y'all and stop in and see us. So I've got that tied off here, and I'm going to take my crystal flash, and I'm just going to rotate my vise, and I'm putting a little bit of rib in there. going to make that thing a little bit juicy, okay? That looks sweeter than a than a good old Reese cup or a Snickers ice cream bar on a hot day. Okay. So I'm going to take this here. I'm going to capture it. I want to tie that off in there just like so. Got that. Now I'm just going to come in here. And this is why I don't throw stuff away because this here was a piece of an underwing that I had. Um, okay. So now you see how by taking, when we cut our, um, calf wings here at an angle, it helped us taper that body. So anatomically correct. Corey, man, hope everything's going well down in Alabama. Looks like you're tying up some uh, nice flies in there for that uh, red-eyed bass. Um, I think that would be kind of fun to come and do down there, throw some poppers or some things like that for sure uh, on, those, uh, on those bass down there, that kusa and talapusa and stuff. That would be great. So the next material that we have here is going to be some, uh, some golden badger. Uh, this is off a of cape. And per the last live video that I did, I've actually taken and I've stripped off the bottom of the hackle fibers. And I'm going to tie this in with the shiny side facing y'all with the dull side facing me. That is going to throw those feathers orient them in the way that I want them to be oriented. I'm going to kind of rotate my vise here to the side, which, you know, allows me to see what's going on. And that's one of the great things about having a uh, vise where you can do a lot of movement and you can see what you're doing, which is important. And now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm building up a ramp. Okay. Now I'm going to put in a half inch. Boom. Red eyes are a blast. Yeah. Um, you know, Steve, I, I didn't really realize the type of fishery you had down there, Corey. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, Stephen, his videos, uh, great stuff right there. has really opened my up for sure about that fishery you have down there. And I think y'all have a uh, event coming up down there in April sometime. So, yeah. Get the sleds out. Well, I, you know, uh, there'll be some places, higher elevations here, they can get the sleds out. Um but there's going to be some kids disappointed down the valleys. So what I did there is I grabbed my hackle. And here's another beautiful thing about the Norvice is I can control my wraps. I've, I've got my tension knob on the, the tight there. And I'm just walking it forward, okay? And you can see I can control these wraps as I come forward in here, okay? And I'm going to stop about right there. I'm going to bring my thread over. I'm going to capture those hackle fibers right there. That looks good, even though I don't, I can't really see that well. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to push that back a little bit. One, two, beautiful. I can get my tippet through the eye. I'm going to reach in here with my Dr. Slick scissors. There's some, all kinds of great scissors out there on the market. Y'all use the scissor that best suits y'all. And I'm just going to take my uh, trusty dusty old whip finisher here 
and I'm going to do a series of whip finishes. Okay, I appreciate that, Randy. You know, there's you have your um, purple haze fly, which is a which is a great fly. Um, but you know, this here, you know, it just it just kind of falls within that wolf style of flies. You know, calf calf um, wings. Uh, you know, a hair tail. Just a very 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 buoyant buoyant fly there for sure. So right there you go, right there's a real simple pattern. For me, I, I pre-sized my hackle. This is a size 12 hook, but this was a size 14 uh, hackle, okay? We talked about that in the last video, understanding about, you know, oversizing your hackle or undersizing the hackle based upon the, the size hook you had and the materials you're gonna tie on, compensating for that. And I like my, wings like this to actually stand up a little bit higher than the hackle and the reason is is for visibility there's an errant fiber i'm going to try to grab that just like so i just used a hackle plier grabbed it and just jerked it out uh, just like your you know um gosh some of these you know these, these unibrow hairs in there anybody get those other than me anyway so there you go there's the first one hopefully that worked out right there I uh, hope you folks can see that okay. I can't, ooh, that blends in with the beard. Uh, hopefully y'all can see that okay, just like that. Uh, that dog will hunt for sure. I'm gonna set that over here in my Norvice tie, uh, tool caddy. Let's go ahead and grab another hook. And the next one we're gonna do, we're gonna use the calf uh, body here. And y'all can see the uh, difference in that. Uh, it looks like Braden walked in with an ice cream waffle cone there. Oh, so they brought me some stuff there too. Bourbon All right. Bourbon and caramel. What? Bourbon and caramel ice cream. They brought me some bourbon brown caramel. Brown butter bourbon truffle ice cream. They brought me some brown butter. Bourbon truffle. Brown bourbon truffle ice cream. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's brown and it's bourbon and it's truffle. How about that, folks? All right. So if you heard them kind of walk in the door right there. Right. We're going to go ahead and get a thread base laid down here and... This is kind of a cool thing about this Norvice. Once you get very accustomed to this system, you, you really can can get a get a cool, it's an awesome tie fly. You know what? I think I want to switch up some colors here right quick. So let me just go ahead and do this here right fast. Let me put in a half hitch, whammo, boom. Let me switch out one of my bobbins. And let's go here to this uh, olive. Look at there. This would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Awesome. We'll do that right quick. See that three, Jim, I don't think I can say it three times fast, whether I've, yeah, if I was reading it, I'll get tongue twisted all the time. If y'all listen to the podcast, y'all know that to be a fact for sure. So, um, get a little bit of Jefferson's off. Ah, my Derek D. Young glass, thanks to the Georgia Drifter. Um, very nice. So now we're going to use the calf body. And um, as you can see, these this is a lot shorter, but it's a lot finer. So it's a little bit easier to tie with. Um, but if you look at the how this patch is cut, uh, you can kind of see how these fibers are lying. So a lot of times it's almost you go, for me, I go from the corner back, okay? I cut here, I cut here, I cut here, I cut here. Um, that way, my tips are all, are all aligned, or the fibers, I should say, are all aligned. And for this here, you're going to be able to use your small hair stacker, whichever kind that is. There's there's a lot of different ones out there. You use the one that fits you the best. Um, so you can see I kind of cut it at that angle. Okay? All right. A lot finer, as you can see, right in through there. You do have under fur. You, you pick that out there. A lot of times, you can just take your finger and, and do this with it. You can blow, um, just just whatever you want to do. Okay, the one thing about uh, calf body versus calf tail is not as bulky. So understanding those proportions based upon how thick you want that wing. Okay, so I want to put this here. Tips in first. Let me clarify that. Your tips go down. Okay, I want to stack that right here. Right. Get 
idea. A lot of people saying Happy New Year out there, man. That was awesome. I know me and Braden were outside playing Tiki Toss. It was uh, so warm here. We had the front door open, um, and we were kind of running in and out to, to kind of time the uh, New Year's ball drop the, about the four minutes that we watched that garbage. But anyway, um, but we, we had uh, – they were playing Uno, and I was commentating Uno. It was only the way Big Mess can combinate it commentate a hand of uno it was quite entertaining so you can see i have my tips facing forward and you hopefully can notice th this is such a much finer finer material and it, it makes a beautiful fly if if your goal is just to tie just a beautiful fly um this this is definitely hands down going to be a better better material to tie with uh, i'm going to reach in here go at that angle i'm using uh my semper fly here as well olive and classic waxed once again you see that taper i've got see the difference in how that taper is along with it being much much finer man somebody done threw me off with some japanese writing in there but uh thank you um i don't know any but uh thank you wherever you're from all right going to pull that wing back going to build up a thread dam once again just like so, build that up, beautiful, you can see right there, I got to build up quite a bit more in front of that, beautiful, awesome, about like so, and I'm going to put a couple of half inches up close to it, just like so, okay, awesome. Now, next week, Tim O'Neill will be on the uh, channel. I'm not for sure what Mr. Tim will be tying uh, there for you, but he will be on. Do not, do not forget about the shows that are coming up. So the show season is kicking off. Had some shows, certainly this uh, here recently, it looked like. And um, it's kind of great to get back out there. Um, Myself, along with Dell and Bobby from Tucka CG Fly Shop, will be at the Buff. That's the Buckeye United Fly Fishers Federation show on Saturday, February the 5th. That's up in the Cincinnati area. If you're up there in that area and you're at that show, please stop by and uh, let's let's talk. I'm not for sure what we'll be doing. The, the, the rumor is that we're going to be podcasting up there, doing several podcasting events. Uh, but if not, you know, if I'm tying, stop by and see me. I got this one little fiber and give it a haircut. Beautiful. So you can see right there, see the difference in that wing compared to this wing. Just see the difference in, in the materials kind of side by side. Much uh, finer. This is much coarser. Okay. Very, very traditional. Your Royal Wolf's um, things that you see in there, your Wolf style. Thunderheads, a great fly that we have here in Western North Carolina. Now, the one thing is, oops, I didn't mean to do that. But, um, you know, I can come in there and my bobbin, as I rotate that, can hit that hair fiber. Uh, hey, Adam. Hey, man. Good to see you, bud. Uh, Y'all brought the rain with you, man. Um, but as you've seen, when I rotated that bobbin, this hair just comes right back into place. I'm not destroying this wing, okay? It's a great thing about that. So right here to my barb area, I'm going to wor work uh, my thread back up to the point. I'm going to tie on my tail. And once again, for the tail, I'm going to use from this other hair right quick. The colors look great. And this is the beauty where you can get creative, okay? You can get creative. All right. So strip those fibers down. I'm going to stack those right quick. Good deal. I'm a Cowboys play here in a little bit. Get a good stack on that. And here I'm going to pull it out this way because the fibers are facing uh, the other direction, the way I want them to go, oriented there for me. Fancy word. I'm going to kind of size that up, get it pretty close. Remember, I can shorten it, but I can't add length to it. When you get to this point, what you got is what you got. If you cut it too short, you'd have to add more uh, and get another stack. I feel like we probably nailed that one there pretty good. Look at there. Beautiful. Up here, I will tighten that down, and if you notice, I got a really nice uh, body through there. Okay, and that's what we're that's what we're looking for. No, it's not bucktail, Jim. It's actually just a just a, a patch of some uh, of some uh, hair that I have here, uh, a little bit of deer hair that I'm about finished with. There, there's different types of deer hair. 
uh, compare done hair. Um, and we'll, and that's one of the videos I want to do as well. Go over that, compare done wings, um, things like that too. Just like on an elk hair caddis, most of your elk hair caddis are actually tied with a, with a, a deer hair just because of the way the hair flares. Um, certainly elk hair is, is a great material to use as well, but it boils down to how hollow the hair is and the tension will cause it to, you can manipulate that to go and, um, you know, flare quite a bit more. Stimulator, for instance, um, you like stimulator hair. Uh, stimulator hair, uh, you know, is a little bit longer. It's a deer hair. Uh, it gives you a great fly. gives you a very, very buoyant fly. Uh, but, but it does such a great job. And, uh, you know, those are some things, you know, in my opinion, uh, just you see here on that. See how it, it just flares just nicely. You, you can get a great looking, you know, fly right there. And understanding how to use the materials that you have, um, understanding thread management, uh, you know, rotating your thread counterclockwise, clockwise, what that will do for you uh, will go a long way. And you doing a really, really good job on your fly and making it easier for you to tie. We certainly don't want people to, to give up. I think when folks get into fly tying when they're new, it's easy to get frustrated if they don't have a support system. And fortunately for y'all, you know, Norvice is giving y'all a support system, whether you tie a Norvice or whatever vice. We'd love for you to, to give a Norvice a try. But having the resources that you have within the ambassador group and team members out there, the, the skills that you can pick up from watching these videos is is priceless. It, it's, it's definitely stuff that you'd be paying good money to go set down 101 with a quality fly tire. You're getting to do that each Sunday or every other Sunday, whatever, just the for your time okay and and time is a new currency so you're investing in yourselves for sure so um you know um, hopefully those little tips you know help so i'm going to run my thread back here to the back what do you say let's go with uh light olive when it goes little big mess right there let's go with some light olive on this particular one here see how this bad boy looks um i know it'll fish no doubt about it. So once again, I'm just going to take and I'm just going to spin this here onto my thread real fine. This, this is just a really, really uber fine um, dubbing. And if, you know, that's the other thing too. Um, there's different dubbings out there. You, you've got natural fur, such as a hairs, uh, hair which is dyed uh, various colors. Uh, you know, your natural fur type dubbings, and then you get synthetic dubbings, and you get super fine dubbings, and you get uh, ice dubbings and things like that. So using the right dubbing for the right situation is important too. So here, I don't know how well you can see it, but I'm actually rotating my vise where I can work my thread in around that point of the hook. And when I get here to this particular spot, now... I can start rotating that forward like so, okay? Once again, I'm gonna add a little bit more dubbing to that. I left it a little bit light on purpose, okay? All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, um, the you know, the Atlanta show, uh, I think is in February. I'm not for sure who will be at that particular show because I will be up in the Cincinnati area currently if everything goes as planned. Um, there, uh, you know, Corey might even be at that one. I'm not for sure. I don't want to speak out of context or throw anyone under the bus, but, uh, go to the Nor, Norvice page. It's nor-vice.com. That's the hyphen sign. Don't spell out hyphen. Um, don't take that literally there and you'll see the show schedule. So right there, you see, we've got a super, super nice body on that particular, uh, fly. Um, so what I want to do now is I'm going to take uh, a couple more of these feathers and I'm going to prepare them and we are going to finish this fly off here. Okay. So I'm just going to come in here like so. Hey, Mark, hope you're doing well this evening. Gunner, John, appreciate you folks there. And I'm just going to start stripping off the bottom barbules as we talked about. Remember that in the last video? If you did, if you hadn't seen it, just go back to the YouTube page and watch it. Okay, and there's a library of really good videos for y'all to watch. Um, so if you want to 
maybe learn some streamer techniques. Um, you know, Grant and, and, and Braden and, and Corey with the dubbing brush table does an outstanding job of making some great dubbing brushes. Um, you know, Britt and Brian do a great job with multiple patterns. Um, everything from those specific Northwest patterns to dry flies to, to nymphs. Um, you know, Tim and them kind of, it's, it's kind of a plethora of things that they tie in there. So, you know, take a look at that video library that's been created for you folks. So once again, I'm just going to spin my thread counterclockwise. So my thread jumps the direction I want it to go. Building me a nice area there for my feather to fall on. Once again, just like before, I'm gonna build a ramp so you can't see from my fingers, but I got that light dialed down so it's not necessarily blinding you. That looks pretty good there. I'm going to put a half hitch. Jock Scott. Um, Jock, great question, bud. Uh, I'm pulling off the bottom side. So that means, meaning that um, when the shiny side is facing y'all, okay? So this being the shiny side or you got convex concave, okay? I didn't pay attention to school that day. But anyway, I'm looking at the dull side of the feather and I'm pulling off the bottom like so, okay? I like to do that on some patterns. And on some patterns, I don't want to do that. I want a bushier, bushier fly, such as maybe on some of our Palmer ties or, or some other things like that. I, I, I want that... It's a lot of times those fiber hackle uh, barbules will almost uh, crisscross in there and it adds more buoyancy to the fly. So great question. Uh, hopefully that that helped you with that um, there. Um, you know, Moonlight, uh, Brandon Moon does a great job with some, you know, some dry fly stuff there. So that's why I love it. Uh, love that. That's why I love to have a notice building brushes. Yeah, uh, Corey, Corey does a great job with that. And there's some videos on the page with Corey doing that. So what I'm going to do now, I always like to make sure that my tension knob is where I want it to be. I'm going to grab my feathers and that's just a habit for me. I get them on my side and I just start to rotate forward. Okay. Once again, remember how I talk, depending on how far uh, forward your wings are will determine how many wraps you get in front and how many wraps you get behind the particular pattern or the, the fly, okay? So kind of like to split those in half, close as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, ugly flies catch fish. You just got to get your, you just got to be able to get your um, your tippet through the, through the eye of the hook. So I want to bring that over. I want to capture that off there a couple of times. Sorry about that, folks. And got that. I want to pull this back. Beautiful. I'm just going to take my half hitch tool here momentarily. A little half hitch. Usually do it by fingers. Uh, but for some of you folks that aren't doing it that way, I'll show you using a half hitch tool. I want to come in here and snip. Snippy, snippy. Just like so. Jack, what's up, Black Jack? Jack, golly, man, hope y'all are doing doing well. Yeah, so the, sh the shiny side would be facing, when you tie it in, it would cause it to face forward. So when you, that is exactly right. That's that's what we're going for. Um, if you get some time, go back and look at the last live event I did in December. Um, I do, a, hopefully, a pretty, pretty good job of uh, explaining that uh, in that particular video. Uh, but it make, it'll make a big difference in what your fly looks like and the quality of the fly for sure. Um, how many wraps in front and back? A lot of times it may be three front, three back. It depends if I'm using two hackle fe feathers or one hackle feather. So if I'm usually using a cape, um, you know, a lot of times I'll use two. If I'm using a saddle, the feather's really, really long. And I, I, I can, you know, it's, I'll, I'll get more, uh, you know, uh, maybe four wraps in front, four in the back. It, you know, and it boils down to the size of the fly too. This is a 12. So keep that in mind. Um, as, as you're getting smaller with your fly, you're not going to get as many wraps and it's not going to take as many wraps. Okay. That's the thing about this. You have to be able to compensate your materials based upon the size of the hook you're currently using. 
be willing to adapt to what you're doing, okay? There's no set rule that says you gotta do one or the other. It boils down to the materials you're using um, there. Let's say that I had this wing set back farther. You know what? I would have only got maybe one or two wraps and I'd have had, you know, maybe four wraps or so in the front uh, of the wing, okay? That's just where the more you, you, you know, tie, um, you know, flies like this, the more consistent you get, just the more confidence you get. And, the, you know, that's where it comes from. I mean, I, I can't explain how, you know, you know, a welder you know, knows how to use his welding rods or whatever he's doing to get to come out the way he does. But those people do, I mean, they work hard at their craft. It's no different for, a, you know, fly tying. You work hard at your craft and you get better and you get better and you get better at it. Um, that's, that's the great thing about it. So anyway, um, Hey Bob, you know, here, here is just an impromptu. We look at this, uh, light olive, you know, it's light olive is a great color, right? Let's look at the underside of this. This is what the fish sees. They see the, the underside silhouette. We see this, this is, in my opinion is for us. As a matter of fact, a lot of, uh, old timers that have passed the gone, they wouldn't even put wings on our fly. They would just put these hackle up here and go and go fish it and work just, just fine. But honestly, it's kind of hard to sell a fly in the bins without any wings on it. Uh, but anyway, there we go. There's two, two flies that are similar, but they're different based upon, forget the color of the body, but let's think more about the wing material itself. Uh, hey, BJ, um, I want to put these here in a little holder. So hopefully y'all can see that momentarily. Just like this, okay? You can see here the coarser wing off of the calf tail versus the finer fibers off of the calf body, okay? Same techniques, same techniques. And you look at the difference, looking at it from the front side. I think that, that makes it even better for y'all. I don't know if that helps any or not. Uh, but you can see how those fibers are in there for sure. Randy, man, appreciate you watching um, there. So if you folks have any questions, you can email me, uh, AppalachianFlies at gmail.com or Shannon, that's S-H-A-N-N-O-N, at Tuck, T-U-C-K, Fly, F-L-Y, shop.com. I'll do my best to answer those for you. Uh, you know, share this video. Um, if you felt like you got some value out of it and you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below. Let us know there on the, um, on the, uh, you know, YouTube channel, um, some of the materials that you're using, what's working for you. What are some techniques you like to do on, you know, using calf body versus calf tail in some of your dry fly patterns. Let us know. We'd love to learn from you as well. Uh, don't forget about the, you know, the events coming up uh, next week. Uh, Tim will be on here. Not for sure what Tim will be doing uh, there, uh, but uh, just remember the, the you know these events coming up in January. And there's a lot more. I'm just going to hit January with you folks. Uh, the seventh and eighth, I believe that's Brian and Britt Davenport out in Idaho, the great state of Idaho, will be doing the uh, Western Idaho Fly Fishing Expo. So if you're out that way, go go by and uh, see Brian and Britt. Hear about that lovely little kitty that makes it in all kinds of those photos that Brett likes to share. Um, uh, you know, it's quite interesting to see what that kitty gets into sometimes. Um, you know, kind of reminds me of our belly scratcher here at the house. Um, January 15th and 16th, if your folks are up in the kind of that Roanoke area, just uh, south of DC, but north of Roanoke, Virginia, you got the Virginia Fly Fishing and Wine Festival that will be coming up. Uh, yeah, the beard would make some good tails, brother. You're exactly right there, Colin. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, January 21st, 22nd, 23rd, Braden's over there laughing right now. I think you might, if I wake up in the morning, I'm missing a chunk of hair. It's y'all's fault. Okay. Uh, the fly fishing show, Marlboro, Massachusetts. The fly fishing show up there, Marlboro. All right. And then January 28, 29, and the 30th, you got the Fly Fishing Show, Edison, New Jersey. That's a big one for sure. 
Jack says, come demo here in Oregon sometimes, man. I, whew, never been to Oregon. Uh-huh. All right. Jim says he'll be there at one of those. That's fantastic, folks. Well, anyway, if you folks don't have any more questions, things like that, I'm not even for sure what time it is. Um, uh, I was told the closest show to Roanoke was Virginia. That is correct, Randy. It's kind of just a little bit north of, uh, north of Roanoke, kind of where that... Uh, I think it's King's Dominion Amusement Park is. It's uh, You get off at that exit and you go out there and it's on your left-hand side, okay? Um, that's where that show is there. The one in Atlanta is down there, uh, really in Gwinnett. If they're doing it at the same place, it's in Gwinnett. Uh, there, um, That's where that one will be, kind of close to where um, Discover Mills Mall. I think it's probably been renamed, but it's it's in that particular area there. Used to play some minor league hockey and stuff right, right there. It's a Doswell, Virginia. That's right. It's, it's Doswell. A um, little bit of Civil War history through the great state of Virginia, of course, but even out through that stretch out through there, too, for sure. Um, that is correct. Um, hey, y'all be looking forward to Tim next week. Hope everybody had a great new year. Hope everybody's safe with this weather we're having across the country. And uh, this is big mess. Until next time. We'll see you then.